This is Tauri Talk, the podcast from the Scuderia Alpha Tauri Formula One team. Check reflect, Yuki. That mega, mega race. And it's a third win of the season for Nick de Vries. Paradise, like traffic paradise. What is this one? What the f*** is that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hello, Kenichiwa, g'day, and buongiorno, and welcome, welcome to. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you don't even have the headphones working. I've specifically turned these headphones and girls, off. Welcome to hundredth or hundred twentieth radio. Oh my gosh! Corner. It's not bad. I spoke, actually, I spoke better than Josh. Michael, good luck for the season. Honestly, like this is what you got to deal with. I. I changed up the intro. I unplugged his his headphones, and he still wants to to ruin the (laughs) intro. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go again. I'm gonna go again. My name's Josh the Admin. Welcome. (laughs) (laughs) Just welcome, guys. Shut up. (laughs) Welcome, Michael. Hi, man. Thank you. Are you done, Yuki? Yeah, I was done. Are you done? Okay, cool. All right, good. All right, today I'm Ladies here with gentlemen, boys Michael Italian. I'm going to mute you now. To... I'm going to mute you. How's that? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll shut up. Now. All right. And I think I've covered all nationalities. By the way, who's Josh? Did I did I mute him? There we go. Muted. And now the intro is even over. That's incredible. Where's my intro? It's gone. It's off. Anyway, as I was saying. I covered all nationalities in that intro. I thought I was pretty proud of it until Yuki came in and ruined it. And I, I've got it written here. I'm happy to welcome back Yuki Sonoda for 2023, but I'm, I'm not entirely... Okay, I'll unmute you now, Yuki. What do you want to say? What was the question? <laughs> there was <laughs> That's no, no question. question. What was that? There was me? no question. It I was can't just, hear. What yeah. was that? Are you drunk? No, I'm not. No, you can do like this. Okay. And I said, I was... Meant to say I'm happy to welcome you back for 2023, but I, I said I was meant to. I know you're happy. I'm not. I can tell from your attitude. <laughs> Last 30 minutes. Last 30 minutes, yeah. It's a single man show here. You come in on your phone and just... I was waiting. Just criticize. Really calm. You're welcome. Moving on. Making his first appearance on the show is one of our newer members of the team, performance coach Michael Italiano. Thank you a lot for joining us. Oh, Boo. oh man get out of here <laughs> <laughs> go away coming up on the show we'll be we'll catch up with yuki's holidays learn more about his new coach michael italiano we'll hear how the preseason went plus we've got a mystery caller later on so let's get to it so we've finally gotten both of you behind the mic um, after a couple of failed attempts but um we have had quite a busy preseason, uh, and i think there's quite a bit to catch up on but first I want to talk about what just happened today because we just came back from karting mm-hmm. yep. at the track in uh, Bahrain. So set the scene. We are in Bahrain in between apart, the tests. Do you want to talk the story apart from I smoked you uh, in the karting? I would hope whoa, you would whoa, smoke whoa, whoa, whoa. us. You've got 30 kilos well, you're advantage. Even more yeah. as Yuki, how much do you weigh again? Something like 55 kilo kilos? Well, Ma- the, Michael the, and I are pushing 90 the kilos each. The lap time difference was not only just weight difference. Yeah, the about guy, 25 the, to 30 kilograms. The guy told me 30 kilograms is about five seconds. No, and yeah. we, we, we were both under five seconds of your lap time. So technically yeah. you came Wait, last. You were, you were more than five seconds though, by the no, way. No way. No yeah, no. it was. Oh, it yeah, was, it was five yeah. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> five, six seconds. Uh, no, yeah, six seconds. I no, was three and a half. No, you have four seconds. Give me, yeah, give me half. Four, four seconds. Four seconds. More than four seconds, by the no, way. No, now it's more than four seconds. Okay, I got it wrong the first time. It's four seconds, and I'm okay with that, given I've got, what, 25, 30 oh, you kilograms well, on you. You did, you did well. I'm quite surprised. Josh actually is a good driver. What about me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was only two seconds off. <laughs> two seconds off. Him. You can only be nice to one person at a time. Yeah, it's not true. in your system to That's do anything right. else. Uh-huh. That's right. Yeah, it was, uh, was, uh, was good. Actually, the first time I drove the Bahrain karting truck, uh, was really fun actually that truck. Uh, quite difficult as well. Sector one is like high speed, uh, like kind of Suzuka, isn't it? Mm, it's fun. Is it, it's like a Suzuka. I didn't think it? of that before, but a little bit is, yeah. Yeah, and uh, first sector is like Suzuka first sector, and last sector is really tricky. So, um, lots lots of sleep, lots of big corner. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it so much. It was really nice. 
So we're staying out in between the preseason tests and the first race of the season in Bahrain. And like I said before, we are in your hotel. There is a lot of things to do here. Like it is a massive resort. What? How are you spending the time uh, in between the races and even before coming in uh, before the test? Uh, we came here. I forgot where was that before test before so four days ago something like that or five days ago. Um, yeah, the, between like testing or whatever, when we are in a hotel, we we do quite often uh, recently ping pong, right? Mm-hmm. We sure did. And he he's really upset because I always. Uh, oh, hang hang on. If, uh, we're, if, we're, if, we're, <laughs> if we're gonna do a podcast, at least at least be honest to the people that I are am. listening. So uh, apparently, I'm winning eight times in oh. a row. Um, this is bullshit. I'm, it's, it's, <laughs> what? Mate, look, I'll give you I'll give you carding, but be honest. Yeah, Go ping on. pong. I'll, okay, I'll, I want to uh, hear it from your own voice. Okay, I'm. Okay, he, you are winning currently. What's the score? It's like, What's uh, the score? What's the score? Yeah. Like uh, four, four, <laughs> four, 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 five losses. <laughs> it's eight nil. Yeah. He hasn't beaten me yet. Yeah, but it's getting closer though. It's getting closer. It's eight nil. Anyway, I mean, you, you could admit so some things aren't aren't your thing, Yuki, and I think racket sports. No, no, it no, is. Right. Netflix it is came out. Sport. Netflix came out, and there's just a scene of you. Swearing with the racket in your hand, and I don't think that's going well for you. No, racket sports is not good. <laughs> no, I mean, um, I don't have just experience, and I'm get, getting already much better. Um, what well, much by batch, and I think three more match I gotta beat you because no, I last... just took it a little bit easy. Oh, come on, because he broke the table. No, I didn't. He broke the table. No, I didn't. He had a he had a dummy spit and he smashed the table with his racket. And I can he, believe and that. And he cracked it. So, oh, it was Corey cracked so, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so because of that, I thought I can't beat him. Too bad, or is he's gonna break the table again? No. Mm-hmm. Well, um, we'll see. Next time, let's see who's the guy who's gonna break the table. I think Michael's got a lot more patience than you. Well, that's why you think. <laughs> <laughs> it is. All right, let's. Let, all right, before we get into too competitiveness here, let's move on to how your break went because um, it's probably the first time we're catching up here. Uh, since the end of last season. So how did you spend your time off after Abu Dhabi? You can start with the Honda Thanks Day when we went to Japan. Yeah, we went to, I went to uh, Honda Thanks Day with uh, Josh. It um, was really nice actually, uh, because I think it was first time I went to Th- Honda Thanks Day as a Formula 1 driver. So um, before that I went, I went when I was Formula 4 drivers, it's a, it's a lot different. Um, Technically, I, the first time you met Pierre. Oh yeah, it's first time I also met you guys was on Thanks Day when yep. I was Formula Four. Yep. When I was driving Formula Four, there was France, Pierre, and you. Um, actually, a bit of story. So on that day, I had lunch like ramen, but it was really garlicky ramen. So <laughs> my my breath was completely garlic smells. I felt bad actually, and I was a bit worried. I didn't expect I I gotta meet you guys, so I just went flat out with lunch. And Honda people took me to the office, uh, to the room. I didn't know what it is. And suddenly there was you guys. So, you know, at that point, at that point, you know, um, you know, I was going impressed because this, well, this George, uh, this France. Man, you can start with me. That's fine. France Pierre. At that point, I'm still, you know, still the, I respecting, I'm still re- respecting you. Don't be everyone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I respect you, but like, you know. Uh, it looks really looks really strong. Who is this bodyguard guy? <laughs> is he is he bodyguard of Pierre or what? But uh, yeah, um, that was first time we met and had a conversation with Pierre and Franz as well. I'm not sure I had with you. Just a, a high and by. Yeah, and yeah, I was I was I felt a bit bad because I had massive garlic lunch, but yeah, that was first time with Honda Thanks Day and you know. Yeah, last year finally able to went to Honda Thanks Day as a Formula One driver, and you know I appreciate the fans that for, most of the people actually came day before, and lining up before the gates from like eight p.m. or even seven p.m. and you know sleeping in the cars. Uh, really? Yeah, I saw a massive queue, and yeah, I feel feels really appreciate appreciated to them. Um, it was a really nice day. Um, Max was Max was Max was there. Checo. Uh, or Pierre, obviously, four drivers. Um, we did a bit of karting. Yeah. With Mark Marquez was there. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, all of the Honda, Honda drive, you know, motorcycles riders and drivers, and it was fun. It was really for me. It was highlight that we, you know, four drivers, uh, Mark Checo, Pierre, and me, did a karting with a, you know, like electric car. Mm. Uh, it was really fun. Um, in the end, I Checo win. I think. Yeah, because you were too busy bumping that. Max off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was like wet patch and uh, I didn't expect that there was wet patch because the lap before there was no wet patch. Probably because uh, when it's when we started, you know, four, 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 four side, you know, four cars was uh, lining up. Side by side, side on by the main side, street. Exactly. And uh, it was really tight because it was a small cutting track. I think Checo bumps to the like kind of tire barrier and that tire bar- barrier there was inside, there was water. And water uh, came out, and uh, I, next lap I tried to overtake Max because from that line, and there's water patch, and I break there. I I did I couldn't stop, and uh, yeah. Michael, what does that sound like to you? A crash. Sounds like a, an excuse. Oh, <laughs> I had to. <laughs> well, in the end, I I'm the guy that didn't. Did in the end, I'm not the guy who the cart stops. So you know, went to, I sm- smashed the Max. I'm not the guy. Uh, yeah, if you're using Max as a braking pad, I think <laughs> his car's not going to come off too well. He used me as a braking pad today. Yeah, me too. He punted me off. No, I'm not like that. I'm We've really, got video I'm, footage I'm of that, well in, You hit me truck. right off the track today and then you like giggled. <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky I didn't go into the wall. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I'm behaving well most of the time in track. Yeah, the key Every word time. there is most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah, I forgot the mis- I mistake the language, but uh, yeah. Well, af- after that, um, we spent time a bit in Tokyo, right? Yeah, no, no, was there as well. I was so sick. Yeah, I was so sick. My my condition was wasn't really good. Uh, I really struggled. So that was a bit shame because it was the only times we spent together with Josh uh, in Tokyo, which we were talking from, you know, from long time ago. Two years, really. Yeah. Uh, but it was really shame. Um, I remember you took, you went to, we went outside uh, to take the medicine. You went to like a <laughs> pharmacy, but every, you know, they, apparently they speak Japanese, right? Yeah. Well, they always speak Japanese. They speak Japanese and I was trying to get him medicine. Did you use Google Translate? I tried and they still didn't really understand. Really? <laughs> I, was, I was showing them the, the, the phone saying. That's what I had saying, to do. Yeah, because he, he's, he's messaging me at like late at like almost 10 p.m. saying like, okay, yeah, can I please have medicine? So I'm like trying to find something. Why don't you get him, why don't you get him on the phone to talk to the girl? Or the, the that would have been too logical. I thought I could do it. <laughs> we got it in the end. Yeah, okay. uh, thank you, thanks for that. Saved my life. Uh, what did you have? Was it like food poisoning? Was it just like general sickness? I don't know. I don't know. The, it was quite, uh, quite, quite bad. Actually, I, do, I couldn't actually even go outside. So, but anyway, um, you're very generous with your time. Like with Noel and I, we yeah. went to the Tokyo Tower. You took us out for eel. I took you to like, lots of places. Yeah, right? no, it, it even was, I was sick. How good's eel? Eel's amazing. I love it. Yeah, I think uh, most of, most people underrate underrated the. Eel. Yeah, they, but for the sound of Japan, it, the look yeah, of it, yeah, it's, but it's, it's so incredible. Good. It's a lot different, isn't it? It is, yeah. If you eat in Japan and outside of Japan, so you, really? you used to have it for breakfast and say, no, this is completely different to Japan. And I was a bit, I didn't believe you yeah. because it, eel is eel, but it's so I take good. it back. I'll take you. I think okay. this year. Yeah. Take you guys again. Uh, so uh, we finish up with Japan. Yeah. Uh, then you're back to Europe, essentially. Yeah, went back to Europe. Uh, we did a um, Christmas party with the team. You know, finally we able to are able to meet with all of the fa- people in the factory in Faenza, um, and yeah, also say thank you, thank you for working. You know, whole year. Uh, even it it wasn't the result that we wanted, but you know, still uh, without them uh, we couldn't achieve still P nine. So um, yeah, it was a good good actually day, and also went to also Vista, uh, um, UK factory, um, also bit of uh I met we met all of the people there. Uh actually it was a really really nice time that I able to be uh to able to met uh, all the people who were walking around with. Um and also actually I forgot to mention also when I went to Japan, I went to Sakura factory, Honda yes, Sakura. Yes. Yeah. The Honda the Honda factory where they yeah, make Honda all the power yeah. units. And not just the Formula One power units, but for Super Formula, Super GT. It's oh, a massive, cool. massive like. Yeah, well, first went factory. Uh, yeah, went uh, first time there. 
Uh, I got I got a warm welcome from all of the people in the factory, also in Honda. Uh, it was very emotional actually because um, I never I never able to even see or you know watch uh, who were working in the factory, especially in terms of power unit. So um, it was really nice, and I literally I, we went everywhere, right? We was we were I was also with Josh as well, and um, um, it was really really nice day. Um, actually, like those. Those things are really important. So, um, we did. I did that, and uh, yeah, after Christmas party, I spent in Europe, um, mainly in Italy. Um, also, first time I spent Christmas in Europe it was actually it was interesting because it's a lot of difference to Japan. It's opposite culture, actually. Yeah. You don't really celebrate Christmas. No, we will. We celebrate a lot, but how we celebrate is a lot different compared to Europe. So we celebrate with more towards like friends, uh, girlfriends in uh, in Japan, um, but it's opposite. So in Europe here, you know, they celebrate with the family, right? More towards like family. It's a big family affair. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's more it's more family oriented. Yeah. We, same, as, same as Australia. And New Year, we celebrate with family in Japan. Yeah. Not not with yeah. my, like girlfriend or Japan, uh, friends or something like that. Yeah. So it's a bit opposite culture. So I, I feel a bit interested, but... It was really nice, actually. Um, and went back to Japan and finally able to spend with a family uh, a week or so. And yeah, um, straight to Dubai, uh, Dubai camp. The pre-season camp. Yeah, pre-season camp. And this is where you come in, Michael. Because, yeah. And I'm sorry I haven't done a proper introduction for you, so maybe you can do it better than I can. Who are you? What do you do? Where do you come from? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Um Michael Italiano. There you go. He's Spanish. Yeah. Uh -huh. Gracias. Um, <laughs> Even yeah. his surname uh, is called Italiano. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit confusing. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I am Australian, but I live in London. I'm, I mean, I've, I've been in Formula One for five years, but yeah, took over for Yuki this year, um, taking over from the great man Noel, as we all we all know. And uh, yeah, Dubai was fun because uh, me and Yuki had only had like a, a one hour coffee together in Abu Dhabi. So before yeah before the the bike first Dubai. time we met was the first time we I got introduced from Noah was Abu Dhabi right our last race yeah yeah after the race but there was tire testing so it was like a day in between the tire testing I think um, and we just kept caught up for a coffee just to yeah I guess uh, break the ice and make sure that Yuki was happy with me coming on board so Dubai was important not just from a training perspective but also just to make sure that you know we build a bit of rapport yeah build a relationship yeah. Um, and we didn't kill each other, so that was a good start. It is a very good start. Yeah, Yuki's not an easy man to deal with. Oh come but on! <laughs> no, he's actually great. I, I actually I really enjoy his enthusiasm for food because I'm I'm a massive foodie. Yeah, I'm always hungry. So like, it's nice when we wake up, we have breakfast, and he's already thinking about okay, where are we having lunch and where are we having dinner. And I'm that like, is that is a big win. I'm like, cool. All right, you you organize that, and I'll organize training, <laughs> <laughs> and the day sorted. So you're also quite far from home. How do you spend um, the the summer break? Given you're from Australia, how do you spend the the break in between seasons? Because now, like you said, you've been here for five years in Formula One. You were mm -hmm. previously training Daniel Ricciardo, mm -hmm. um, so you know what it's like to have a busy season. Like, and you know the importance of rest. So, how do you switch off? Yeah, I go back to Australia between four to six weeks, depending on when preseason starts. Essentially, so. I've been doing that all year. Well, besides the COVID years when I couldn't get back. Um, but bes yeah, besides the COVID years, always back to Australia. Spend four to six weeks there. It's perfect. It's it's sunny in Perth, Western Australia, so it's great. And then to go to Dubai was even better because I avoided the, the European cold for two more weeks. Yeah, a bit jealous of that because I had yeah. to go straight back to work in Italy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of the European cold. So uh, I was quite happy when Yuki was like, do you want to go to Dubai? I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Yeah, Dubai was uh, went super quick actually. Yeah. You know, normally training camp is like for me is ah uh, training <laughs> two weeks. Come on, but actually it went really quick, wasn't it? Like two weeks went super quick. Um, actually, most of the time I didn't have much muscle soreness. You know, I, I had muscle soreness, but it's crazy good, good level of muscle soreness. I, I didn't could, have. Think much. I love it when he wakes up and just says, "No, I can't do too much because I got muscle soreness." No, he's literally. I I, I put him through some serious sessions, and he. Every day he was fine. So we didn't have a single rest day because 
yeah. his capacity to, to like with it for like from like a training threshold perspective was actually really good. So better than I thought. It probably just reminded me how what it was like to be 22 again. Um, was it actually? Was it, I mean, it was I'm in good shape, right? So I did have. Yeah, you're in good shape. So then we did have time to do a few activities. So. But only thing I had a uh, muscle soreness was abs. Do you know why? <laughs> Because I had so much laugh. <laughs> we yeah, did laugh always, a bit. I have a couple couple of days um, muscle soreness <laughs> with abs, which is a good thing. You know, abs is the most important place to look good. He literally had muscle soreness in his, his abs because <laughs> we went through a couple of days of laughing yeah. and, you know, taking the piss out of each other. So it was actually quite cool. So in this preseason training camp, Michael, what is your main focus for having two weeks with a new client, a new athlete? Yeah, I mean, I had a pretty thorough handover with Noel. So I, I, I didn't go into this like blindly, but also I didn't want to, I guess... I guess overcompensate what I've been told. So from from my perspective, one, I just wanted to get consistency of training in with Yuki and just understand how he responds to my my style of coaching. Because my style of coaching is obviously very different to, to Noel's and and every every coach in, in Formula One has their own style of coaching. So yeah, it was good for me to get him in some sessions, especially the the, the strength sessions, see where his form's at, um, just seeing seeing what his tolerance is as well. And seeing, like I said, his, his, his threshold of like how much volume he can actually withstand. Um, so that was good because then I started understanding a little bit about the way he trains, the, you know, how he pulls up, um, what motivates him. And uh, so the, the, those two weeks were very, very important for me. And I, I think also for Yuki. But, um, yeah, I definitely left impressed for sure. Um, yes, that's a compliment. Um, I was very impressed because like, Yeah, like Yuki's obviously got this persona because, you know, he's openly said, he, I hate training, but truth is, like, he just gets on with it. Like, yeah. uh, you know, we'll wake up and I'll be like, cool, we're doing mobility, then we'll have breakfast, then we're going to go to the gym, we're going to do a strength session, then we're going to have lunch, and then in between lunch we might just chill by the pool for a bit or play some play some uh, football out on the, on the sand, and then we'll do another conditioning session, and then we'll go to dinner. And he's like, cool. Like, there was no... No excuses. There was no, there was no whining when I was adding weight to the barbell. <laughs> there was no whining when I, you know, made him go hard on the bike or in his upper body conditioning session, which was tough. Um, so that that I think that definitely like that like that that impressed me because I I wasn't sure what I was going to get. Like I wasn't sure if he was going to hate me for it. Yeah. <laughs> But to be fair, he was like, "Cool, let's do it. Let's do the work. We're here." And yeah, like I said, we literally. We did more than I honestly assumed we would, so I think it was very, very productive. I think, I think also the food environment in Dubai helps as well. Like, oh, all, we like some food for me food. is like literally same as fuel for the car. <laughs> like, if well, I can have like enough food, I can. If I can, you know, enjoy, uh, you know, food, I just feels low energy, um, which is fair enough. Yeah, yeah less motivation. Uh, but food environment in Dubai, I think it was really, really good. Also, we chose a really good hotel, I think, uh, for the food. So, well, we, we went also actually a lot of places for restaurants. So that also good was Japanese, really, good we had Italian. A, we had a, I don't know, it's good Korean. It's okay to say here, but really good uh, Negroni we had. Yes, so we did enjoy a Negroni one night just yeah. to celebrate a very my, was my a friend, very successful two weeks. Um, it was Yuki's friend. He was uh, the hotel maker. He's and Italian. Yeah, he, he used, to, used to work near us in Faenza. Yeah, exactly. Oh, there you go. So you know uh, him. Uh, yeah. He knows as well. Oh, but he made the best smoked Negroni I've ever oh, had. Oh, so good. Like, to, to, like, I think I would go to Dubai just for that. <laughs> Mate, I'm, I'm sucked in already because how impressive is it that we're talking about training and he's already spun it around so now we're talking about food again. <laughs> It, it was oh that, it was that good. We only had one. We we yeah. left it at one because we thought if we <laughs> if we order another one, it's probably going to turn into three or four. <laughs> But uh, so we're disciplined on that on that aspect. I hate giving Yuki a big head any more than he needs one. But Michael, what are some of Yuki's biggest strengths that you've um, seen during the preseason camp? Biggest strengths. <clears throat> I'm going to say prioritizing his health. So. I'll give you an example. I gave him some vitamins and I was like, cool, take this every morning. And good thing was I don't have to really remind him. You know, he'll take his vitamins, he'll take his greens. 
um, and I'll get to breakfast and I'm like, I'll, I'll remind him. And he's like, nope, already done. So like um, I think like he's, you know, he's the way he like presents himself as, a, as an athlete um, I think was really, really good. So I think that's definitely something that to be, that impressed me, how he prioritises his health. I would say um, I was going to say um, soccer, but I beat him at that. No, no, what? <laughs> so outdoor. I scored just four goals to you. <laughs> and also I, I dribbled and just passed you multiple <laughs> times. You didn't do to me single things to me. So hey, hey the question was to me, all right? So yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so I have to um, mute your microphone again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, but he's he's. But I uh, like this type. I like this type. <laughs> um, his his ability to d- adapt because you know I I, I would assume it, you know it wouldn't be easy changing coaches. So I think from Yuki's perspective, like he 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 allowed me to to take control quite early, and he did put a lot of trust in me. Just obviously with the plan and. How, how every day kind of went. Um, so that was that was really pleasing. And I think that just made like the experience very seamless because I could tell straight away that he just, he put trust in me and he let me let me get along with it. So, and I know that wouldn't be easy because, uh, you know, different environment, different person, different character. So um, yeah, um, what else? Come on, there's a plenty oh, not, more. Yeah, okay, okay, just ta 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 But you know what his weakness is? Interrupting, uh, yeah, doesn't short temper. Shut up! I know. Um, no, uh, singing, he does. He's not good at singing. What? No. Um, I can sing now. No, are. you can't. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> he's actually he's actually a really good cyclist. Um, I did beat him. Singing? I did beat him uphill once, twice. What the but, hell? But, but we won't talk no about that. No way. But he's a good cyclist. He um he I struggled to keep up with him, but I kept up with him. Uh, so that's definitely a strength of his. Um. I'm going to say sleeping. You're, you're a pretty good sleeper. That's not a compliment. That is a good compliment because that's such, that's that's not such, everyone has a solid, yeah. un- uninterrupted eight hours of sleep. Really? Yeah. Sleep sleep's a big it's a big barrier for people. And like as a sportsman, if you can sleep well, that's a that's a big benefit from a performance aspect. So no, that's definitely that's definitely a compliment. As a person, you know, as a personality. Oh, as a personality, you're great. I think uh, I didn't think we were. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll rephrase that. I didn't think we we're going to get. <laughs> along as well as what we did oh, yeah. um like like it happened very quickly to a point where i started teasing him he started teasing me and and it was actually uh it was actually really cool so uh yeah i i think yeah the dynamic has worked worked more well than i thought i thought it'd probably take me a little bit of time to to build that that friendly report but i think it's it kind of came quite natural in dubai i guess because we spent so much time together um and yeah i think that's enough what do that's you think enough. Well, you can talk about the you know, second second time because it's not. I don't. I know it's not enough time to say everything. But yeah, we we do we do again this time. This one, next time. So as as you've kind of mentioned or alluded to that Yuki can be quite. A, let's put it like a character. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure you've already had your fair share of stories mm-hmm. of being with him so much in these past couple of months. Uh, yep, I got plenty. Feel free. This is a place for sharing, no, Michael. I mean, okay, well. So I've nicknamed him the banana. Um, <laughs> and the reason for that is because... I nicknamed him monkey, by the way. <laughs> he, can't, he can't drink. <laughs> like, I know this might sound very confusing, but... And we're not any, talking alcohol here. No, no, we're talking... You grab a water bottle, you grab a glass, and as soon as he drinks it, he spills whatever's in that glass on himself. Like, it, it happens every day. It's Are actually happened now? every day. No, but it happened this morning, so it still mm-hmm. counts. So the best part of Dubai was that he would always just keep wearing his white T-shirt and I'd give him a greens juice and he would just spill the greens juice on his <laughs> shirt every day and then he'd just, he just swear at himself and abuse himself and call himself an idiot and it, it was actually quite comical. Why do, you keep, why do you keep having white shirts? You're wearing a white shirt now. And then we'll be in the car and he'll do it in the car like at the red light and he'll be like, it's your fault, you drove too fast. I'm like, mate, we're at a red light. So that's, <laughs> that's one thing that I found quite hilarious at Yuki um, and he's very forgetful. So he left his Alpha Tari jacket um, at Paul Ricard. So he lost no, that. That definitely someone stole it. Okay. He thinks it got stolen. So the next week we went to London. I took him to the vintage markets. That's he, cool. he wanted to buy a new jacket because <laughs> obviously because he got his jacket stolen. Can I, can I it, talk about the... No, no, let me finish the story. Okay, sorry. And then uh, it was his only jacket. So it was freezing in London, so he needed a jacket. So he bought a really cool retro 
um, jacket. It was actually, I actually really liked it. Um, it was a vintage thing. He's like, man, I love this jacket. Wore it everywhere through London. Called me in uh, in two <laughs> days' time when he had to fly to New York for the AlphaTauri uh, event, uh, the launch, and he goes, I just lost that new jacket. <laughs> I left it on the plane. So, uh, yeah, he's quite forgetful as well. Oh, so shame. <laughs> I kick a good opportunity. It's a, it's, a, it's talk about actually the vintage market you took me in yeah. London. That place was heaven, literally. Um, I'm not talking about vintage market. A vintage market oh, was also really good. The but food? Especially, it was a vintage market was on, at on, underground. Yeah. And gl- ground floor. Brick Lane, by the there way. There was like if people are- food market there. Like, uh, I don't know, street, street food market, wasn't it? Yeah, it's like yeah. a it's like a indoor street food. I also a uh, country's cuisines there, and it was the quality was, there was also really good. But like the thing is, you can eat a lot of things, a lot of kind of cuisines there at the same time. Oh, that was so heaven. Um, y- Yuki lost his marbles. He just went. Oh, around, he just yeah. bought. I just run, so run, much running food. around the bucket. Oh, it's like my eyes was literally moving every seconds, some directions and. Oh, but still, I enjoy so much. Uh, I didn't know actually there was like kind of like that market in London called. I don't want to say actually here because everyone's gonna go. But anyway, <laughs> um, still the hubris opinion. of this man. Oh, everyone's gonna go to somewhere that I've mentioned but on a podcast. I'll say I'm a nice guy, so I'll say it's a Brick Lane market, right? Yeah, Brick Lane vintage yeah, market. Yeah, so nice. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I'll go definitely one more time. Well, how, many, how many more stories more? you want? Uh let's do. I'm gonna let's go two. Okay. So then after Brick Lane, I told Yuki we're going to take him to um, uh, VC, which is like like v- virtual reality gaming. So uh, I organized it. I won you. Yeah, he did win, but that's not the story. His second time, by the way. The story is we went there, we got in. He's like, oh, what are we playing? I'm like, oh, we're playing a zombie game. He's like, no, no, no. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, no, no, I, I, can't, I, I can't do zombies. You don't have to talk about <laughs> <Right>. that. <laughs> we literally, we get in the room. And we've put our headsets on. <laughs> He's like freaking out. Get off from my skin. <laughs> there was literally like one zombie popped up and he just started screaming. He's like, I'm not doing this. I'm not <laughs> doing this. It was, it was actually hilarious. This is an apex. I've actually got a video of it. I'm going to show you. Um, but then he got he got around to it and he actually ended up winning. Yeah. So, so was, apart from that story, I did well. <laughs> Even his, <laughs> his second time. But I, uh, my score was almost two times bigger oh, no, than you. I wasn't. I was just too busy laughing Complete, how scared like, you were. Completely. I did like proper Jason Statham movement. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of lunges. <laughs> and the second uh, story is Yuki spat coffee all over me a couple of days ago. Do you remember that? Coffee? Yeah. You spat coffee all over me. Did I? Yeah. The track with Mattia. We were sitting there. You were drinking coffee and it made you laugh. <laughs> you spat it all over me. <laughs> Do you not remember that? Oh, well, it's your fault in the end then. <laughs> you, made me, you made me laugh, so, you know. It doesn't matter, like, what the situation is. If, it, if you're putting something on Yuki, it's your fault. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you, I'm sorry oh, I spat. You, you saw it. Yeah. You saw it. I squeezed lemon in his eye and then he just threw this massive yogurt thing at me. <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> Yeah, well, which surprised uh, me to be honest because it was food. No, actually, it was sauce. But yeah, actually, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sorry, remember, you remember that one? But yeah, yeah sauce. But actually, I, even in sauce, I shouldn't do that because you know, I, I regret so much at that night. <laughs> do you? Well, not 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 not, not that I'm throw into you. Throw throw. I I feel actually happy that I throw throw to you, <laughs> but I regret that I throw the food. I okay. should throw something else, that maybe me, chairs or knife me. or. Jesus, no. <laughs> I'm joking. All right. Speaking of the nice, beautiful relationship, we ha- we did have a, a surprise caller in, but Ooh. since it's a podcast, it's not caller in, it's a message. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to play it for you now, and I'm going to put it on loudspeaker here so we can all hear it. Hello, guys. It's uh, Noel here. You might remember me. I used to be Yuki's coach for the previous two seasons. Um, just stopped by on a special request to try and help out the team. 
Hey Michael, uh, Josh got in touch with me and said that uh, it might be really useful if I could pass on one or two tips of how to survive a year with Yuki. <laughs> <laughs> this certainly isn't for the faint hearted and I'll be honest with you, I, I certainly don't have it cracked. Um, but the main thing to remember is that no matter how bad a time you're having, he's probably having a worse time. And that was certainly the case with him spending time in my company. So my first tip for you, it's actually one that I take from um, uh, the idea of stoicism going back a very long way and um, this idea of memento mori. And it was said that um, Caesar would walk among the crowds and the, the people would line the streets and cheer his name and celebrate him wherever he went. But actually Caesar, he knew that he shouldn't let this go to his head so what he did was he uh, actually employed someone to walk along just slightly beside him and say you are human whilst he's walking through the crowds and this was this reminder that even though all of these people were screaming his name he was not better than them and he wasn't um, in any way special he was just one of the people and I really took this on board and often you know Yuki would tell you that he's the best tennis player or the best at basketball uh, or the best at bowling and these are just three things that without even thinking that I beat him at on a regular basis and oh, I am what? a really bad tennis player um, <laughs> but you can't always beat him at tennis or baseball or basketball or you know any of these sports bowling so the simplest thing I used to do every morning when he come down for breakfast in the hotel or perhaps I meet him at the airport is I just say, good morning, ugly. Because quite often he would like to tell you that he could be a model. And I think it's really important that you don't let this sort of, um, you know, perception go to his head. And actually, I used to remind him as well that he probably wouldn't have been very successful in other areas um, and one of the reasons for his success is that in motorsport, so much of his time was spent, in fact, with a big helmet covering up his face. <laughs> the next one, Michael, and this is a big one. Uh -oh. And I don't know how to prepare you for this. I never really cracked it, um, but it's the singing. <laughs> Yuki sings a lot. I already know that. The problem is that he is a very, <laughs> very bad singer. <laughs> and he would have you believe See? that he's a very good singer. Yeah, in fact, so great. much so that he practices regularly and is a big karaoke fan. But if that, you know, Adele uh, video of him and Pierre that did the rounds last year, like if that's anything to go by, I, I mean, that's it. probably that's probably a little bit worse than normal. I, th I would suggest that he was probably putting it on a bit, you know, really laying it on thick, but. When it's just the two of you in the car, back and forth to the circuit, it's going to be bad. I mean, <laughs> it's going to be intense. Every day. And probably you've had a long day and you're already thinking about the next job or what you got to do when you get back to the hotel or that email you need to reply to, whatever it is, or how you're going to get him another room key because he's lost two already today. But you're going to have to find a coping strategy. And what I would do is I would just basically just look into the distance <laughs> and breathe. I just count my breaths. It's almost like a sort of meditative state. But I'd have to go somewhere in my head because I honestly I couldn't tell you like I couldn't tell you another way to cope. And he'll ask you for a review of the singing, and I, I mean he'll tell you this is true. But I regularly just sort of go, sure, yeah, that was some singing that you just did. I can't give you you know, a breakdown of this. This isn't sort of Britain's Got Talent or X Factor or something like that. Thank God it isn't because, you know, he wouldn't get out of the, the casting stage where they queue up outside that building, hundreds of them. Um, but yeah, look, just, just please be prepared for this. Um, it's going to happen. It'll happen a lot. But just, you know, try and encourage him and support him. You don't want to keep keep on him too much. He, he needs, he needs the, the encouragement. And we'll do one more. The performance coach, top tip number three for surviving a year with Yuki Tsunoda is to remember everything for him and by this I mean you will have to remember things that even you have already forgotten but he has forgotten before you <laughs> and the first trip that we did together was to 
uh, Bahrain testing and then the Bahrain race. And we spent about 10 days probably in the same uh, hotel over the course of these two trips. And the first trip, I think it was three or four nights maximum. And then the next trip was about four nights, five nights again. But in total, it's about 10 days. I'll let Yuki tell you how many room keys he lost in that time. But I've never known a man to lose two to three keys a day, every day. <laughs> and very quickly, you know, it got to the point where the reception uh, staff would see Yuki arrive back into the lobby of the hotel. <laughs> And they would already be coding a new key for him <laughs> because he'd already lost it. Nothing's I, changed. For the life of me, I couldn't tell you where they are. Um, they could be down the back of uh, the car seat or they're in his pocket or they're somewhere. But you need to be on top of this at all times. And quite regularly, he'll get up and walk away from somewhere and he'll have left, I don't know, his, his passport or something on the side. Um, we will remember the passport generally, but one that he's also very good at forgetting, and actually I've heard this isn't just unique to Yuki, but he's very good at forgetting his wallet. So, you know, again, just make sure if you're out for dinner that one of you's got your wallet. <laughs> um, thank you, Noel. I must say, if we're going uh, in order from uh, the first suggestion to the last, <laughs> he... he <laughs> So he called you ugly every morning. I mean, I call you a banana every morning. So that's <laughs> we've, got, we've, got, we've got that covered. Yeah, yeah. Um, the second one with the singing, I just, um, I start the car and start driving straight away. And what that does is it actually stops him, allow, allowing him to actually connect the Bluetooth to his phone so he can't play music, can't sing. Uh, and the third, I've already, I already knew in Dubai, he lost eight keys, uh, sorry, um, room keys. And already to, uh, in this in this um, this week, he's already lost three. We need to come up with a system of what to do when he loses each key. Yeah, I don't know. And I, I also want to know where are they? Like, you must find them. No, I I, I literally because if you got, lose eight, surely one's popping up. I think someone's stolen. Oh. Stolen, <laughs> stolen my keys because. I, and here we are I back no to idea. someone else's fault. I don't have no idea because this this is gone. It's just you know some some people some person just really i don't know sacrifice some ability or you know something the luck just there's not there's nothing about the keys or something losing something because i think really i'm not losing it sometimes someone's stalling it definitely losing them okay <laughs> well i just can't find it so you know it's really strange but no, thank you, Noel. Um, yeah, I mean, I've already experienced all those three, so it's good to have a bit of a... It's great. We have more, and I'm going to save them for the next episode. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's gone. There is, there's a good five or six minutes left of, of oh, that audio way, clip. Oh, really? No, it's, it's not that all things is true. I uh, see. No, all things is not. Some, I'm, I'm definitely agreeing with those Noel three. is also really good at uh, talking bullshit, so... <laughs> no, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with him. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. So that was your old trainer, Noel Carroll's survival tips, Yuki. Well, and I think the thing that I like best about that is that you can't respond. It's it's done. It's out in the air maybe now. Maybe next time, actually, I want to have the, okay, this time how to to survive with Noel Carroll to the driver who's working with this year. Feel free. Yeah, yeah I'll We've do that. We've got the equipment. I'll do that, yeah. 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 He, he always needs the last. <laughs> the last. <laughs> That's fair, right? You love having the last word, don't you? Mm -mm. Just to wrap up the trainer talk, Yuki, you've now had three trainers in your professional career. Four. Four? Yep. Four. Dan. There you go. Elliot. No. Italiano. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just How... glad he didn't say monkey. <laughs> yeah, it's true. He was quite nice there. <laughs> I know. How have each impacted you as an athlete? Like, do you take attributes from each one of them and sort of implement them in your daily life or do you kind of like reset mm, i don't know um um i don't even reset you reset no oh you don't I, reset. Don't, I don't even reset um just trust the trainer what they're requesting to me and what uh, they want to meet me to do for the training 
um, in the end, he, they have more, much more experience. Um, same as for me is driving, the racing, you know, like I just give the feedback um, how I felt in the car, you know, like overstay, understay. I don't, I don't say much technical thing because in the end, engineers know much more technical thing. So I just say I want to, you know, improve this part to, okay, to support more rear um, stability or something like that. You know, in the end, just engineers going to do it. So how uh, right? they have much more ideas. So same as that um, for for every trainers, I always you know, trust them and they know much more than me what they, what part of muscles uh, I have to improve or, you know, my, my, what muscles um, is really important for the, you know, not even just racing or whatever. So um, just give the feedback, give the feedback to them um, what I want to train and what part of place you know, um, I didn't feel good or, you know, even I want, sometimes I want to understand what did, what this training effect, affected me and what for, what benefits uh, happy for. So it's for me, it's, uh, it's quite easy. Um, but also I, I know that every every trainer I always get along well. Um, I'm really happy. I'm quite lucky that I every trainers I I get along well apart from Michael. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a long year. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's good. Um, I'm really happy with it. And uh, banana. <laughs> <laughs> all trainers are really really nice. So apart from Michael. So. <laughs> And with a new trainer comes new exercises. Have you finally found a favorite exercise or muscle group to train? What? Mm, no. Uh, I like I like the boxing. Yeah. Yeah, I like the boxing. He hates because, when we do calves. Because I can I can punch you. <laughs> well, you punch my hands. But still. <laughs> <laughs> you got to take anything you can get, I guess. Well, uh, it, I actually like putting him through boxing because I can see the pain on his face <laughs> and it brings it brings so much enjoyment to my life. Yeah, I'll say boxing. Okay, well, that's all the time that we have for today's show. Thank you very much, Yuki and Michael, for coming in and giving us a lot of your time. I wouldn't say too much because, Yuki, you're cutting it short. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah, thank you, Michael, for coming in. We'll no, do more of these. thank you for having me. Make sure you subscribe to Tauri Talk on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. That way you'll get all the latest episodes as they drop. Last episode, we had Nick DeFries and his performance coach, Piri Salmero, on the show. So if you want to compare notes between Nick and Yuki's pre-seasons, you can. It's on episode nine. Until next time, it's bye for now. www.schooldevavatari.com. Check it out. Ciao. <laughs> what the hell was Go that? Go on website now. 15, 15% discount. Always got to have the last word, like you said. He's going to cut that. I will. I've got the power. Well, come on.